there are a couple more things. You might remember in the beginning we have deleted one row and then we also updated one record. Let's see how they look currently. Let's find address with ID 400. As you see, record with address ID 400 is still there. Now let's look at the record number 500. There are a couple instances of address ID 500. There's one, and there's Percona Road. First, we want to know what records were deleted from that table. To do that, we can use constraints parser with an option minus D to get the deleted records. There's a record with ID 400. And this is something we want to remove manually from the text file which we are going to import. As for the updated record, with address ID 500, it's just important to get the import command right to get last records imported as the valid ones. That's why we are going to use replace rather than insert. So let's load the data. First, we want to have the table ready for the import. We could copy that from the test database. Now the load data command. There it is. Oops, again the foreign key constraint issue. Let's set foreign key checks to zero and run the command again. Aha, uh -huh, so we have warnings. Let's see what is that. Data truncated for calm last update. We could check the data to see what is wrong with that. As you see, timestamps are all zero. MySQL stores timestamps as integers, so we want to convert them during the import. We can just improve our import command to do the conversion on the run. So uh, we use the 
integer timestamp as a variable and we used function from Unix time to set the last update. As we use the replace, we didn't have to remove the old data first. As you see, it deleted 702 rows and inserted the same number, this time with no warnings. Now let's check the MD5 checksum again. Is it the same? As you see, the data is same we had before dropping the table. Very cool. So that's how you recover your lost IMDB data. For more tutorials and tips, visit www.percona.tv. Thank you very much.